Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Welcome. It's my last show of the year. Hooray! And um, believe it or not, it is. It really, really is. Don't know if I can... Uh, Stand the excitement of it all. Uh, good evening. Welcome to At the Table. I am your host, Kelly Lincoln. And this is uh, End of the Meat Year. Um, so much meat, so little bread to put slap it on. Um, wow. We have survived, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, what's his ass didn't blow us up, up yet. Um, the cultist... The Q um, is uh, laughing at people. We've got the dude raised, uh, I don't know how many millions um, for the border wall. And because of the way he raised it, he doesn't have to return any of the money. Um, What else is there to say? Oh, my God. Um, So much, so much. I hope your Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Yule whatever you celebrate this time of year. Festivus, um, the Festivus uh, high priest, Donald Trump, the wimp, uh, still airing his grievances. And, I, you know, i got to just say, <sighs> deep breaths. <sighs> and I want to thank everybody who tunes in um, and listens and puts up with my uh, nonsense, however that nonsense may be. Um, I'm t- got to take. I've got my damn ear. I hate listening to myself. Um, just removed my headphones, such as they are. Um, this evening's show is brought to you by um, my sense of self worth. <laughs> I've I've had an interesting year. I'm going to start out talking about my year. Um, as I've said before, um, I started therapy, and I and my my therapist also happens to be a forensic psychologist. So it, it's it's kind of weird going in to talk with the, with with them uh, because I don't know if they're looking at me um, as a victim, a suspect, or a patient. I'm hopeful, hoping it's a patient. But sometimes I just can't um, discern that. Um, I mean, I've been in therapy before, and this particular therapist is not doesn't feel to me as um, approachable or as empathetic as my medical psychiatrist or the therapist that helped me through my assault. Now, maybe it's because that the uh, room that we are in has no windows. And that might have something to do with it because we had one session in another office that had a window and it felt much more comfortable. So maybe that little bit of sunlight from the outside um, breezing in was was part of the um, the psychology of uh, how I was feeling towards her that day. Um, she's really good, and I'm an obstinate little thing. Um, who, who, since my brain injury, um, tends to see everything in in black and white rather than than shades of rather than um, gray scale as it should be, uh, especially when it comes to me. I it's black and white with me. It's not a gray scale, and uh, she finds that highly frustrating. And frankly, so do I, and so do most people I deal with when we're dealing with um, issues that have nuance. I can be nuanced when it's not relating to me, but as soon as it does, it's like, nah, you don't want to do the, it's like, you know, such is my life. So, some of the stuff, um, you know, and we, we, we are all have our own little issues when it comes to how we perceive the comments, compliments, and, and things that are addressed to us. Um, a lot of times when you're somebody is talking with you and they're trying and they're and they're working with you and they are trying to tell you something or point something out to you 
you tend to see it as as a black and white deal because it's just our nature. Um, we tend to become defensive. I am like really defensive when it comes to talking about me. Aren't we all? However, and then I take a look at, at, at some people and the way they behave and wonder, you know, is there, like, am I being, is, is this person coming around and like, well, I work with, I work with somebody who for some odd reason, we work for two separate companies, but yet he comes and tells me stuff that I like have no control over concerning his interactions with his supervisor and company or I don't need to know when you're you're leaving. I don't need to know when you're going to lunch. Just go. Don't, you know, just because you don't like something doesn't mean, you know, it's like when we start talking, he, he's another vendor's rep, and when we start talking about stuff, he starts talking about it from his perspective and why he doesn't like it and listening to him and how, you know, it's like, just because you don't like something doesn't mean you should be talking a customer out of it. You know, somebody comes in and they want to buy a specific Chromebook with a specific set of specifications. Don't downsell them to something with lesser specifications because they're not going to be happy and they might come back in a couple of days and be mad because it doesn't suit their needs. And he does this a lot. He'll, like, downspec people. Well, we're not on commission, so it doesn't really make a difference. But, dudes, come on. And, you know, this is my tales from retail. And, um... Ugh. It can become annoying. And I, I'm starting physical therapy for my ankle this week. I fractured it a uh, couple months ago. Um, first, they, they thought it was a bad sprain. One week later... Oh, you really did fracture it and I'm still hobbling around listening to port listening to starboard rather port's to the left and um because uh yeah I'm got torn ligament and uh standing all day long is painful and comfortable and I really don't like having to take a break to sit down just to just to just to rest my foot even though everybody says it's cool including my manager uh, what else? you know, it's sort of like sitting down and talking about shit. Um, my um. Oh yeah, I'm I'm preparing to go uh do live streaming. <laughs> Lucky people, and um, I work with an app, great app. It's a great program. It's called OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. And it's cross-platform Mac, Windows, Linux. But the recent update uh, killed it as far as sound routing goes. And suddenly I also have a lot of lag for it when I'm broadcasting. It's fine once it's recorded, but broadcasting uh, when I'm watching the live stream. Now, maybe it's because I'm watching the live stream at the same time I'm, this, I'm broadcasting through the same software. Who knows? And that's why I've got the lag. But the biggest issue is I have no... Um, sound because Apple I love Apple I wouldn't uh, but sometimes they make our lives a little really living hell um, and so right now I'm playing with with an app another application by rogue amoeba called um, whoop, drop my glasses audio hijack and loop back and it's a great app pro couple of programs and loopback is basically allows you to route audio in your your computer, um, and then loop it back through an applica- another application. And um, there's another application you can use um, that's free. I paid for uh, uh, loopback and audio hijack are both paid software, but it's well worth paying for it if you're on a Mac uh, because uh, both of them are really really flexible. Um, the cool thing about Audio Hijack is that you can just launch that and use that to broadcast via nice ca- Icecast or Shoutcast once you get everything routed. And they've got a bunch of templates and a blank template so you can set up stuff the way you want. And it's a really, really great program. So is Loopback uh, by, uh, you know, um, and if you can afford it, 
buy these two applications because you'll be really happy. I don't get any money for this. I'm just letting you know that all you Mac users out there that want to like record a podcast, um, you know, you you know, you live live stream live stream your own you know DJ stuff and you know, subscribe. Uh, you're you can do this. I use both the Spreaker software here that I'm coming to you from here on. Uh, NetrootsRadio.com, Team Netroots, Spreaker.com. Uh, you'll be hearing this replay tomorrow evening, uh, Saturday, actually later today. It's 24 minutes past the hour, and uh, but I've spent a day and a half trying to get the audio to to route back through OBS so I can hear myself, and I'm happy. It's like that's not happening. And it's frustrating. <laughs> it's very frustrating. I'm setting it up on YouTube and, you know, streaming it. And, you know, maybe I just shouldn't watch what's going on on YouTube and just stream it and then play it back and see what's going on. But if there's no live sound going through on the live, well, if they've got audio in the playback, I've got live. Um, you know, and and I'll keep looking at it because I really don't have the $700 for Wirecast. Uh, which is another cross-platform video, live streaming video soft um, application for Mac and Windows. Um, and I guess that's my biggest bitch with Apple, is that they are very, very clo- a very closed ecosystem, which makes it really difficult for developers to create applications that serve both Windows and the Mac and the Linux community. Um most likely, if my Linux laptop had, was powerful enough and had a higher had a higher resolution to the monitor, um, it's a piece of shit right now. It's dead. It's not coming back, Jim. Um, I I would have been using most likely been using that for um, streaming. Although it's just as much a pain in the ass to deal with with the con- it's never mind. I'm going off off. I'm going off script as per usual, and. Um, Going back to some of the stuff about my therapy and the traumas and stuff, I have been getting, um, I don't like the word triggered. I have been getting peeved and I, I, I live in a building, I, I live in supportive housing because I am living with a traumatic brain injury and it's, it's made my ability to deal with um, idi- uh, frustrating things and dumbass people even worse than it was prior to the injury um and by that i mean i'm dealing i'm living in a building with other people with a so um with assorted um physical and or mental issues and and some not just senior issues it's senior supportive housing but I swear to God, what is it about people that will not step out, step the fuck out of the way when a door opens, be it an elevator or a a, a, a subway train here in New York, or even on a bus? Swear to God, I am going to walk over somebody just if they don't get out of my way when I'm trying to debark. Have some, con- I mean, it's New York, I'm not going to live with it, I'm, you know, my motto is caveat, is not caveat, carpe pedia cruz, seize the crosswalk. California, I would walk over a car that was in the crosswalk. Here, if I did that, I'd get killed. And it's, it's, it's annoying as all shit. Let's not get out. Oh, anyway, I've had some, pe- I've had some shit that's um, been triggering or just just setting me off, um, flipping me out, whatever. And elevator people people who will not get out of the way, or when you're trying to debark so they can get on, or like pushing their way on while you're trying to get off. It's like it's 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 annoying, and you want to just like seeing. And um, speaking of triggers, Mr. Thwimp. Um, He's, he's somebody who likes attention, if, who, who it's negative attention. So apparently, 
he learned negative attention. You know, he's one of those individuals who learned at a young age that negative attention gets is better than no attention. And um, his his temper tantrums right now are because he's never up until now he never heard the word no before, and it's tripping him out. He can't handle it, and um, better now than never. And you know. Um, He's mad because he can't go down to Mar-a-Lago and 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 you know you know collect all that sweet sweet in you know access money. Uh, but Marla, but Marla, Melania is doing that for him. I'm sure she's taking copious notes and or recording it. Um, and I'm sure he's. I really hate talking about this man at the end of the year because that's not what I wanted to talk about at the end of the year. Okay. So, um, I want to talk about more more amusing things like Jerome Corsi and and you know trying trying to make money off of um, his alleged role in whatever conspiracy to defraud the United States may be. Um, he and and um, he Corsi was a birther is a birther. And so now he's got um, other folks from the birther crew, grifting crew, coming in to help him. And, um, oh God, uh, Larry Clayman. Um, inappropriate Gary, Larry. Um, he's got the nickname of uh, Grossly Inappropriate Larry. Um, be, uh, you, it's up to you to do the to do the research out as to why he is called that. Uh, but that's you know he's it's a bunch of you know money grubbing grifting, grifty grif, grifty McGrifters, and I'm sure that the fact that Barack Obama and his beautiful wife Michelle. Are considered um, are are the most admired admired people in America um, is really chomping at people's uh, bigots um, bits. Hopefully, they're Spanish bits, and their mouths are getting all chewed up. A Spanish bit um, is a particularly cruel. Um, horse bit in that um, it causes the horse's mouth to get chewed up when it when it because it's it's um, because of the way it is made it is a um, or was um, kind of uh, um, had little spikies on it that would like chew the horse's mouth up um, so, where am I? <laughs> uh, where am I? Pay attention when I'm talking to you, boy. So, okay. Oh, yes. Um, oh, the reason, reason I'm calling this the end of meat here is that one of the markets I shop at, when they finish, are, are at the very tail very last pieces of meat um, in in the deli and they can't slice it anymore they cube it up and throw it all together into into um, containers and they label it end of meat that is why I'm doing this this is we're just at that tail end of the the um, the pastrami or the corned beef or the ham or the turkey breast and so this is of the year. So this is the end of meat for me, where I just throw out all sorts of random stuff like I haven't done that in prior podcasts. Um, but this year I want to talk about what I'm grateful for. You know, cause I don't do that a lot because it's for me it's difficult to, to to talk about these things. I know what I'm grateful for, and and voicing them somehow to me it's it's. I don't know how to put that into words, but this is, you know, so what I, when I look back on this past year, I am, I'm grateful for my friends, 
my brother, my nephews, my late sister-in-law. I am grateful When I, when I talk about grateful for friends, I'm talking about the friends that I know face to face and the friends I only know from friending them on Facebook. And while Facebook is becoming more and more of a, a, a surveillance mon monster, a data monster, I, I got to say that I have created some really nice friendships. And one of my my online friends he he lives in Tripoli Libya and his mother passed away a, a week ago and he's in pain and it's you know and I'm I'm grateful that I am there for his friendship and the fact that he shared that with me um And that's something really important to me. Between the DNA tests, where my brother and I discovered that we're what, that yes, we really are related, and <laughs> and that we're oh my God, a hundred percent European, Western European Jewish. That's Sephardic, and our, and also finding out you know coming across family in the Netherlands who have trace our father's family back to the 18th century Netherlands and um, this this absolutely great website and I've talked about it before called genie.com g-e-n-i.com there is just enough information on my grandmother's family that they've been able to take it back all the way to my 11th great grandmother and grandfather, and that is the 1500s. Um, and that's that's really kind of amazing. And this, both them and Ancestry.com, where we did our um, DNA DNA testing, put us back in touch with first cousins. And I have found that I, that we have. My brother and I have, and his and my nephews, have family here in New York City, and that I've been in contact with them, and I'm looking forward to this. This is this has made my life in New York a lot better, and I'm grateful for the fact that now that I know I have family in New York City, I know that I am really not I'm not familial alone. That I am not alone with no f real fam blood family. Um, that makes it a lot easier, and you know, um, my health is. I'm, I'm grateful that my health is good, except for the fractured ankle, slightly fractured ankle. Um, I, <laughs> I have blood tests that I still have to do before next week. That's okay. I will. I will get around to doing that <laughs> this coming week, uh, because it's, I'm just a procrastinator, and and depressed, and and. Um, Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's just low brain fluids. Who knows? Um, I don't know how else, what else am I grateful for? I'm grateful we did not have an alien invasion last night, for Thursday night, when it, there was this huge blue arc of light that lit up the skyline and, and the kaboom was heard all through the entire city. Uh, there was a transformer that blew in, in, long, long, in Astoria, Queens that shut down um, LaGuardia Airport and power went out on Rikers Island and a lot of other few other places and um, now they're going to be doing a uh, investigation into what happened. Well I can tell you what happened and what happened is you've got obsolete equipment that needed to be replaced. And now you have no choice, Con Ed. Uh, oh, New York, New York. It's so much fun. Uh, 
So in, just to remind everybody who took the d shut down down. I will shut down the government. Okay, absolutely. Enough. And I we am disagree. proud, and I'll we tell you disagree. what, I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. Last week, President Trump said he would proudly claim responsibility for a government shutdown. It yes, will he surprise did. no one that just this morning he's now placing the blame on Democrats. With mere hours until the lights go out, the president just tweeted, Senator Mitch McConnell should fight for the border wall and border for the wall and border security as hard as Yep. He's um uh well, you know, he's somebody who just will always take responsibility until shove comes to push, and then he discovers, oops, I don't want somebody else's fault. Not me. I didn't do it. I said I would take it, take the mantle of it. <sighs> Poor Donnie, Donnie Thwimp. What then? This. If your engine is not revving up, you know what you need. You need a Holy Ghost enema right up your rear end. Yep. The end of the line. The end of the day. Yeah, I know who knows. Who cares? Do we really care? Do we really know? I'll be seeing you in all the old... Familiar places. Yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> I actually had some stuff written down here, but it's... Actually, I do have stuff written down here. Uh, okay, yeah. What are your triggers? What sets you off? What are you grateful for? Um, what makes you happy what what do you want for yourself for the coming year because it's it's a truism that you can't do for anybody else unless you can do your do for you if you can't help yourself if you cannot take care of yourself you can't take care of anybody else you have to take care of yourself first and that doesn't mean be selfish it doesn't mean only think of yourself it means you need to make sure that you are taken care of, that your needs are met, because then you are able to meet other people's needs, take care of them. People who are generous, kind, and giving are also kind to themselves, says somebody who's awfully hard on themselves. Um, and that becomes important. You need, you know, and this is a very stressful time for people, uh, people who don't have family. People who who may have family but feel a, but feel they don't belong with the family, even though they know it's kind of it's it's a weird that it's not true. People who are stressed people can be very stressed out right now, and to be honest about it, just because you know people, just because you're. Somebody is smiling and laughing and everything's right with the world doesn't mean everything's right with their world. We're, we're all, a, and I'm talking about because we're coming up, you know, the end of the holiday season is coming up and there are still people who are hurting to the point that they want to self-harm. Um, the people who are most likely to self-harm are the ones that don't talk about it. The people who talk about it are telling you they want, they need help. If you look at Anth at what everybody, if you take a look at what people said about Anthony Bourdain, Robin Williams, before they committed suicide, they didn't have a care in the world. They were happy, full of life. until they're not. When I wanted to harm myself, 
when I heard windows calling to me to jump out of them, I, I hospitalized myself a few years ago because of that. I'm alive because a friend of mine helped me. And they, they helped me check into the psych ward. And if it had not been for them, And the fact with my luck, I wouldn't have, like, I just would have, like, paralyzed myself from the neck down had I jumped from a window. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. There is always somebody to talk to, and I know I'm all over the place with this. And tonight I don't really care that I'm all over the place, because this is basically how my brain actually does work. Um, leapfrogging from one thought to another to another to another and then eventually getting back around to what I was originally talking to about but we're all talking but this also has to do with triggers and what can set us off make us flip out upset us And, and once we learn to recognize both the external, we can recognize the external things, so we can pretty much handle them by, by avoiding. The, the difficulty comes is when these triggers are internalized. After my assault, it took me an extremely long period of time to um, gin up the courage to take the train up to Hamilton Heights or even go past Hamilton Heights. I, mean, I take a train to, to, my, to my day job and my weekend job and it's bit difficult to to go past you know see the building where uh, special victims for that precinct is located um, and then get off the train um, two stops before the one I would normally get off at, I would have gotten off at had I still been living in that neighborhood but I, I've tr taught myself to not, I've immunized myself about those triggers. It's far enough in the past and my assailant is in prison for life. So there's no reason for me to be concerned or worried or scared that something's going to happen to me up there again. But it hasn't given me who I was before the assault back. I'm still a different, per st I am still not who I was prior. I never will be. And that brings me to another issue with triggers is that is when you have an invisible disability and you are so high functioning that not even your psychiatrists believe you are brain injured. But then again, from what I was told, they may not have read the neuropsych past the, you know, may have not looked at anything past the ADHD diagnosis. We'll find out on, we'll find out this week. Um, and you're listening to At the Table here on NetRootsRadio.com going to uh, play you a little something that I um, do, 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 that I, um, 
created several years ago. Right here. And this this was a um We're in this together, This is just the sound this is the remix that I did as part of a challenge for the Colbert Report. Um so enjoy this is a Colbert uh Lessig remix and I call it Mouth of Madness. We're in this together, Stephen. So welcome to the Mouth of Madness.
book, My Work of Art. My Work of Art. Oh yeah, baby, my words, my book of my book of art, or my rules, my world, my rules. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did that. Uh, um, I God, I don't know how many years ago, uh, but it was um, one of Stephen Colbert's challenges um, for the nation uh, to do a remix of um, uh, with Lawrence Lessig and, and Colbert and some stuff. And um, it was authorized and it was just for fun. And I really wish he would go back and, and run, have those types of fan challenges again because to spark the creativity, I mean, he's got his fan art Fridays, but some of us are really crappy artists. I'm working on being a better one, and I, basically I'm cartooning um, having to, and abstract painting, and eventually I'm going to become brave enough to like really fucking make a mess of my, my room and try uh, what's called pore painting. And if you go over to Reddit, I know, I know, I know, but Reddit is not all cesspool. There are some really awesome, amazing um, subreddits. Um, there's a photo critique Reddit. There's a really great one called, called um, Accidental Renaissance, Accidental Rockwell. It's exactly what you think they are. If you, and um, there's one called Poor Painting, um, which is Poor Painting is a technique of taking acrylic paints, adding a type of thinner to it, and uh, and then just pouring it. You're mixing it up and then actually just pouring it onto the canvas and letting it make its beautiful designs. And there's some gorgeous, gorgeous artwork I've seen on there. Um, it, like I said, there's that. There is, um, there's some, um, there's a subreddit for puns. There's some wonderful, horrible, wonderfully horrible ones. Um, there's one for etymology, history, um, uh, ask historians where uh, there's a, there's like several science uh, reddits subreddits uh, just an amazing it's it's more than just the, the, the shithole reddits that you hear about um, and and you know um, ask historians is really awesome because you can find you learn a lot of things there's another one called today I learned um Another subreddit dedicated to old news, literally old news, and it's if you just need a break from something, um, these are the safe for work reddits. Uh, there's a Twin Peaks reddit if you're in a Twin Peaks, Bob's Burgers, you name the TV show, they got it. There is a sub, there is a subreddit fandom for it. Um, slow cooking. There is a subreddit dedicated to onions. Onions, nothing but onions in this particular forum, and uh, that makes it a lot of that makes it fun. It's like, oh, let's go watch here, yeah, ooh, onions, and th all the wonderful things that you can do with onions. Uh, a subreddit dedicated to meat. It's called Meat, M E A T, Meat. Go figure. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of you know, there's a, there's it, there there is a, a cesspool. Um, that you want to stay away from there. Um, but it, it's kind of cool. I like it. I am having fun over there. Um, what about, you know, uh, yeah, it's 45 minutes after the hour. It's 15 minutes before the hour. And you're listening to da -da 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 -da! At the Table with Kelly Lincoln. Here on NetRootsRadio.com. <laughs> uh, here we are in the middle of it, and I haven't even told you how you can uh, find me. You can follow me on Twitter. That is ATT Show. Uh, like my Facebook page, facebook.com slash masterless people. And I was going to do a couple of, seg couple of segments, try and reintroduce or become more consistent. <laughs> Lots of luck, Kelly. Consistency has never been my forte, except in cooking and painting and not getting around to practicing the mandolin or the ukulele. I have both. 
And I just sort of like sit there and my ukulele is sitting in, in, in the walking boot, um, being pathetic. And my mandolin is on the other side of the room being pathetic and staring me down saying, you really need to pick me back up. You used to be able to play me. Harden them fingers, finger pads, stretch them, you know. And it's just not occurring. Uh... So what are, I'm going to go back to my, my themes of what are you grateful for? What am I grateful for? I think you just heard it. Um, my, my desire for next year is to lighten up. I have spent the last couple of weeks not watching any of the political shows um, because I needed a mental health break because it's, 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 beca- it's gone into syndication. And after a while, it's just like, oh, my God, what else is there? And now it appears that Robert Mueller's got nude selfies. And I really don't want to know, well, know who it is. Don't want to see them. And apparently um, Mueller thinks it's... um, sensitive enough that it's being under seal and uh, the Russian agency that's being that's been indicted or subpoenaed or whatever is saying hey what is if these guys are nude selfies why is it being centered under national security why don't they release it which means that it might be the president which somehow or other wouldn't surprise me I've only had one person send me naked selfies. And I like that person, so it's okay. And that person will never have to worry about them getting out to the public because they no longer exist online. I mean, if you're going to send somebody naked pictures, for God's sake, don't keep it on your phone or in your email. Are you crazy or something? Oh, and that's, so it's, uh, oh, my dear, oh, my goodness, gracious me. So, uh, what else am I grateful for? The fact that I can recognize people, what games people are playing. And Robert Mueller, as far as I'm concerned, is still playing Go. Very simple rule, the game has very simple rules. But it's an incredibly complex game that has more moves than chess. Chess only has a specific number of moves. Uh, With Go, there are like infinite possibilities. And while there are those saying that Thwimp is playing playing four-dimensional chess, he's not. I initially thought he was playing like checkers. Or solid, or I don't know, um, go fish. No, not go fish. <laughs> Man, he's not right now. He's not even playing. He's not even a, capable of playing fifty-two card pickup. He it's the more he whines and wheedles and lashes out, the more. guilty he he appears we all say but an innocent man wouldn't act like that but also innocent people there's an expectation of certain behaviors um oh he had to be guilty he was guilty he he didn't react you you know everybody does not react to grief the same way or to stressful situations the same way. But I'm saying what he's reacting to is that he's guilty of sin. Well, no, not sin. Uh, he's just guilty. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe not, you know, as far as the the uh, election goes. But he's a cheap he's a cheap ass wannabe mafioso. And the thing is, is that he keeps he's modeled, and I've said this before. Um, his three favorite his favorite films are Citizen Kane, The Godfather. And Goodfellas. Well, we can see how he's behaving, that he's modeled himself after um, Kane, who itself was modeled after, allegedly, William Hurst, who built, who built, um, who gave us the, 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 the yellow journalism line of Remember the Maine! And got us into the uh, Spanish-American War, when, when, um, but he's always fancied himself a, a, a mobster, a wannabe mobster. He's nothing but a low-level, cheap-ass money launderer. And he's not even good at that because he got his ass fined for that three times by, by uh, the government for money laundering through the, his um, casinos. He has a hotel in Las Vegas. But he does not have the, the casino license. Australia doesn't want him, uh, won't, won't let him open up a, a, a casino because of his alleged mob connections. So, you know, yeah, we've got other people saying he's dirty. Jersey, on the other hand, said, okay, we won't investigate you for that um, investigation on the, that bribery charge that never, you know. He just said, uh, don't invest, he, you know, he, don't investigate me, please. When he opened his casino in Jersey, he promised no junk bonds. He went to junk bonds on it. He's never been a man of his word. And I'm wondering how many people who fell for his, um, for, for his nutritional line and for Trump University also ended up voting for him. My God, I can't believe, you know, some people... Just, just never learn. And uh, I gotta say, I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this, but maybe we'll see. Oh, the games people play in now. Maybe not in every day now. We're going to give this a try, see if you can hear it. Maybe not. We'll just figure it out. Hope you can. I, you may not be able to hear this because I'm think you can hear it. Now nah, you can't hear this. It's not happening. I'm sorry. It's only coming through my headphones. Sorry. <laughs> I'll have it for you next week. Happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year. Uh, happy 2019. Happy end of meet episode. You know, stay tuned. This is for the folks listening on Saturday evening. Stay tuned for Katie Speaks. With Katie Klaubisch here on NetRootsRadio.com.